that that phone call that was a fraud, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I can't once my attorney gets the subpoena from the phone company. Right. But right. In the meantime, he shouldn't be be uh, threatening to come out and arrest me again. Okay. No, you're absolutely right about that. But let me let, let's let's. And he's, and he's been telling the prosecuting attorneys to tell my attorney that. Now. He doesn't want me advertising on Craigslist or Backpage, which okay. I do. Okay. And the advertisements are legal. I advertise in the adult section, and I got, they are legal. I got you. Let me just for for a minute go over okay. your go over your case as I understand it, and then I'm going to be requesting some specific records. And Danny, I'm going to want you to write some some things down. So have your pen handy, okay? Yes, sir. Got it. Okay. Send my right hand. All right. Perfect. Okay, Ms. McManus, uh, let's just yes. let's just go briefly over your story. Then I'm going to request the policies pertaining to the things that you're going to tell me. And let's start with the police coming out to your house. Basically, what you told me a few days ago is that the uh, one of your neighbors called to complain uh, that the police showed up at your residence, that an officer was undercover, came into your home, and uh, you then gave him a body massage that the officer took all of his clothes off and you massaged him but did not touch any part of his genital area, that the officer at some point said he wasn't feeling well, went outside, and as you got up to put your robe on, you saw the SWAT team and that they all surrounded you and then arrested you. Is that correct? Well, yeah, I didn't even go outside. They just came in through my house. Okay, they did come into your house. Okay. Right, the officer, as soon as I got to the front door, he opened the door and came in and handcuffed me. Okay, okay. All right. Like, I, I can send you, I can send you a copy of the arrest report. I can fax it to you. I can also send you a copy through the email that would, of the fraudulent phone conversation. Okay, can you? I can you, also send you a copy of what my whole story I wrote it in Word mm -hmm. about, uh, and I send it, I think I sent you the, my story when I first told, uh, you, you know, entered the data on your website. Okay, well, do me a favor. I'd like to get those documents immediately if you can get them to me. Um, if you can get them to me this morning, that would be great. I have to know your fax number and your um, email. Okay, how about if I do it this way? Uh, I'm going to email you all my fax number and email address. If you can, uh, you don't need to give me your email address because I already have it. So just stand by for an email from me uh, in, in a couple of minutes after this phone call. And then I want you to respond to it with uh, the records that you can send by email. And I'll include my fax number. You can send it there, okay? Right, and I'll send you the link to the uh, back page in Craigslist ads. Okay. All right. So that's what he's making a big deal over. He wants to pretty much run my little erotic rubdown business that I do very part time for my house out of business. Mm hmm And the the only thing that you do is you wear lingerie while you perform the massage. Is that right? Right. Okay. And there's no sexual there's no sexual exchange huh? there's no sexual exchange with the client. Well, I, I give them a, a, a rub down, okay? Yeah, I got it. Okay. And a lot of the clients masturbate in front of me afterwards. Okay, well, that's not you that's doing it. That's what the happy ending is about. I got you. I got you. And that keeps it legal. I got you. I got There's you. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, 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 and right. And I allow mutual touch. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and, and so basically that's what happens. I got it. I got it. I got it. But that's legal. Okay. Okay. And I do it in my home. I don't do it in a public area. I got it. Now, did the police... The t prostitution laws are meant to get people out of public areas that are soliciting for sex. Let me ask you a question. Do you have any copies of the, the, the ordinances or the laws that would apply in your situation? You mean from my state? Yes. Because it sounds like you've researched, you've researched some of this. Well, there's some websites that have it. If you look up, uh, you can do research on Texas laws and prostitution, and you can you can find it. That's where I found it. 
Okay, then that's that's good for us to know, and I'll have Danny looking at those things. All right. Well, and, it's, it's in a public place, mm -hmm. and and the the client has to agree to something sexual for payment. Okay. And and if you state that the payment you're getting paid for a rubdown, something non-sexual, that's perfectly legal. I could even do it if I was a massage therapist. Mm -hmm. And then if afterwards, if the client wants to masturbate or whatever, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But that's not, the laws have, basically say in a public place, and there has to be an agreement to be paid for something sexual. And then that's what the officer changed everything. And he, he wrote all that in the report. And I never agreed to be paid for anything sexual. Got it. Got it. But. So what he did is he created a fraudulent phone conversation of me saying orally hand and mouth in it, but I never said it because the day he called me, which he, he said on the on the phone call, he called me on the 22nd of October. I was arrested the 26th, but he first called me on the 19th. I was busy. I couldn't see him. Then he called me the Sunday on the 26th, the day that I gave an appointment. He didn't know I had a Craigslist ad at the time. I didn't have back page then. So he just asked for an appointment. Of course, he thought I was dealing drugs. Do you see what I mean? Because mm -hmm. a neighbor called and complained about traffic. Mm -hmm. She had no idea what was happening. So he created a fraudulent phone call that he said that he did on the 22nd. And what I'm doing is I'm having my lawyer subpoena the phone company showing that he never called me on the 22nd. And this is we'll get the case dismissed. I'm fighting this tooth and nail. I got it. I, got I don't it. want this on my record. I have no record. I understand. And if I go back to massage school because I'd like to take massage classes, I can't have a criminal record even for this. Okay. Understood. Okay, Danny, uh, I have a couple of things I'd like you to do. Uh, can you pull up the location where the incident took place? Sure. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, let me write down the location. Okay. Uh, Ms. McManus, can you give me the, the ad, your, your address uh, and, and the, or give me the cross streets in your neighborhood? I want to, just, I want to take a look at the street. And then I'm going to ask you a few questions about where the SWAT team was and where this officer parked his vehicle and if there are any witnesses in the area. Well, the neighbors saw the SWAT team. One of my neighbors across the street did. Okay. And that, actually, Danny, you can get her uh, address off of the, uh, the complaint form. It's about... I put my address in there. Is the, you said your address is on there, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, go back to the complaint form and pull it up. And then just uh, give me a shot. And um, Ms. McManus, let me just tell you some of the records that I'm going to be requesting from the police department. I'm definitely going to request training records on the officer to find out what sort of undercover training he received. Because I do have some concerns about how this was conducted. If they're arresting you for prostitution, uh, it would require some conversation indicating that you were actually selling those services. And based on what you've well, told Well, that's why he made a fraudulent phone call. Right, right. He, well, and I'm going to send it to you on the... Um, in the email? Over the email. I have a copy of it on my computer. Okay. When I got a copy of it to listen to from my first lawyer, I made a copy on my computer. Okay, okay. Well, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be requesting the officer's training records. I'm also going to be requesting the department's policies with regard to undercover operations. Uh, and th there are specific guidelines that undercover operators are supposed to follow based uh, on issues of safety and also legality. So I want to make sure that they were following their own rules when they conducted this investigation. The other thing I'm going to do is I want to request a previous arrest of this type. Because I'd like to know, when they're doing these sting operations, are you the only one who's been drawn into it in this matter? And I just found it bizarre that this officer took all of his clothes off, did not get any solicitation for prostitution, and then still arrested you. So we have some things that we need to look at. 
And Danny, I'm going to want you to uh, send those over in a FOIA request.